Everything's a struggle, isn't it? Yep. Oh, living is a struggle. <laughs> Fuck, I cannot wait to eat more calories. <laughs> Almost there. I'm so excited. I look at my countdown time every, every day. I'm like, 18 days, 17 days. Try to push through your heels, Des. Yeah, good. That's Might not be 110. No, not today. <laughs> what do you reckon next? You want to stay there or? No, I can go heavier. Just thinking. Let's go 90. 90? 90 might be the first working set though. All right. Okay. I had thought of a topic to talk about and now I've forgotten about it. Um, should have messaged it. So think of separating the floor when you come up. Yeah. Eight. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. Make sure that's our number. Yeah. Do you have any topics for this week? Topics, topics, topics. Um, what have I been thinking about lately? Yeah, for me, it's just really, I've been really trying to get into this work-life balance. And not so much balance, but just setting up a system for myself. Like, I, my whole year, this year, is going to be on that. Yeah. So it's just being disciplined. I think the hardest thing for me is being disciplined with the plan that I put in place. Mm. And I think that's just my mindset. I don't know if this is the immigrant, like, coming from immigrant parents, and it's, and being Asian as well, it was you work and that's your purpose in life. You know, like you, <laughs> if you don't work, you're useless. So um, I've kind of had to break away from that to kind of yeah. break away from that conditioning of uh. work, 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 work to, hey, I'm alive. I need to enjoy my life kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah I've been really questioning a lot of things and why I thought how it, why it was so difficult for me to prioritize things outside of work. Yeah. And I just think, well, maybe it's just because of the way I was brought up. Conditioning. Conditioning. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's an interesting concept. Yeah, you, you talk to any Asian and it's sort of like your sole purpose of being alive is to work and make money. <laughs> yeah. Because I know like my conditioning from my parents was budgeting and the value of money. Mm -hmm. So they lost a business when I was younger and they ended up breaking even, but that impacted their finances and how they looked at money and how they saved, which was then passed on to me. It took me ages to realize I could buy something that I wanted yeah, if I yeah. liked it. Because yeah. I, I was always taught from a young age, if we went to the shops and if I had birthday money or just money that I'd saved up and I wanted to buy something, my mum would go, are you sure you really want this? we'll walk around the shops and come back and if you really want it, we'll get it. Mm. But that walk would always be, change, your mind. change my mind. I would never buy anything. Mm. And then, yeah, like that just carried through my, my adult years as well. It took me a long time, especially for little things. Mm. Like little things that was like $50 and it's like of no consequence to purchasing that if I've got spending money saved. Mm. I guess it just goes to show those formative years how 
how I guess they're, they're so fundamental into shaping who you are and the way you think. Yeah. Two. Last one. That's not the last one. No, that's not the last one. That's the last one. Are we good? Yep. Yeah. Oh. How many sets? Four. Okay. You know, and, and also my my ability to say no to things when it comes mm. to work. And um, so the book that I'm reading, I think I might have told you, is The Cure for Burnout. Yeah. And in there, this is talking about how perfectionism and workaholism is a form of dopamine because you get rewarded for it. Yes. So then that's why you get stuck and you don't say no to things because you, you want to excel and be seen as a top performer. But then on the flip side is if you say no to this, another opportunity can come up mm. that where you're not getting burnt out. So burnt, burnt out by volume. So you get a ton of work, you're getting burnt out because you just got so much volume. Yeah. So reducing the volume, but the volume's there because you're chasing that, that reward or that validation or that tap on the, tap on the back. Mm. But then that tap on the back can come from anywhere mm. if that's what you're chasing. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's a really funny thing to, get to, to sort of unpick because we do so much subconsciously that we think this mm. is just what we do, but we've never challenged it. Yeah. All right, I don't know whether you've had the same thing, but as you've transitioned when you're younger from your family life into more of your social life with friends that you make at school and mm -hmm. other people that you just interact with, but traditions, nuances, behaviors that you do with your family, you sometimes realize how not everyone does that. Oh, yeah. And I noticed that like as a weird small example, but words that I used with my family jokingly, or we would make words up and it would be an in-joke. Yeah. You would use it with friends. And they have no idea. And they have no <laughs> idea, or they've never heard that word before, or yeah. it's never used within that context because it's different. Yeah. And I, I think I was in kindergarten when I first did that. And it was a weird experience. And I was like, oh, not everyone's family is the same. No. We're all different. But then that comes down to everything too. You know, that's. that's family and then society and then yeah. culture and then politics like we're so conditioned and a lot of our thoughts and the things we do aren't really our own you know? yeah or we never question it that's it three four so control control good five six Seven. Ooh. Eight. It's beautiful. <sighs> that was our second. Third, because my first, second, or oh, unless you want to count, not count the Walmart set as a working set. No, so. That, okay, yeah, two more then. Because, like, for example, when I, when I quit, resigned from my job to do this, that even that thought alone, the old tree would have been no, oh, no way. You know that's fucking that, that's just not unheard of. You don't yeah. do that. You get a job, if it's a good paying job, you stay there and you protect yeah. it like a motherfucker. Yeah. And just breaking that mindset was the first thing to go. Hey, I did this and I didn't die. Like, yeah. I didn't, like the world didn't implode. So what? <laughs> it's else? like, yeah. what is it? The Hangover, mm. where the the Asian comedian dude is like, but did you die? <laughs> but did you die? Yeah, it's true, but did you die? No. Did your world implode? No. Yeah. So I think we've, we've put all these fears and unrealistic limitations on ourselves from our conditioning, from yeah. our experiences. But I guess your experience is kind of like the yardstick <coughs> that you compare everything to because yes. that's all you have. Yeah. So is the answer to get more experience? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Everything, it's funny in business, you think about it, in corporate business, you always think about the risk that you take and the cost benefit mm -hmm. analysis of that risk. 
or you're trying to mitigate or eliminate risks. But as humans, we do that innately. We just don't prescribe that framework mm. to our own lives. Because if you're changing jobs, that's a risk. Mm. If I decide to eat a new food, that's it's a risk. risk. Yep. Like everything is a risk to a degree and we constantly make this trade-off in our head. But our conditioning teaches us preconceived conceptions of the risk. Mm. Because we, for example, the money thing, for me, was I saw my parents and the level of risk that they had and the fallout that they had to deal with that. Mm. So my conception of money and the risk of spending money was shaped off their that's experience, yeah. but that's not my experience. Yeah. And I, being a kid, I was equating spending $50 to buying a business, mm. which is not the same thing, like mm. completely different. But then that's, that was your reference point. Like yes. you didn't have yeah. anything else to reference from. Yeah. But it's funny that those conceptions from being a child carry through to your adult years and you never really question it until no. you come up against it or someone else challenges your concept of reality. Also, so, or, or like a major, not traumatic, but a, a major life event happens that causes you to question things. Yes. Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven, last one, yep. eight, Ooh. beautiful. Yeah, and that whole, the fear thing, you know, fear of losing a job, fear of not quitting a job or whatnot, I guess that, that that's a survival emotion. It's a, a survival mechanism to have that fear to not do that. But then is our fear so, like the, is it a real fear now? Because we don't have the fears of our cavemen where yes. you get eaten by a tiger, that's yeah. fear, run away. Whereas now, oh my God, this person just, he, he might, say a mean word to me, I'm not going to go over there. Is that the same as being eaten by a tiger? Maybe not, but then the emotions are still there. You know, the... Well, yeah, I guess because civilised society is a small speck in the spectrum of our survival instincts. Right, but then our And our emotion... amygdala is trying to equate what we're feeling in society to what we felt when we were being chased by a tiger. So the amygdala is the, the bottom part of the brain, isn't it? That formed first. The emotional uh, yeah. part of the brain. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Don't quote me, viewers, but yeah, I think so. It's like our primal. Yeah, instincts. the emotions. Yeah. yeah. Bulgarians? I got one more set. That was fourth, was it? Or third? That was the fourth, including the warm up. Oh, right, okay, one more. <laughs> is that what we. Yes, correct. We got one more. Welcome to another episode of Tree and Desi Try and Count. Can't do too many Sets things and weights. at once. Yep. Can't do too many things at once. Can't talk and do. It's one or the other. Don't worry. I can't pick up two dumbbells that are the same weight <laughs> and feel the difference. <laughs> the joys of dieting. <laughs> oh, mate, it wouldn't have mattered if I was on a diet or not. I'd still be confused about which dumbbell I was picking up. Um, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. All right, so can you just put a go all the way down so your knee touches the ground for me? I just want to see the positioning of the bench. Can you bring that? Yeah, stay there. Can you just go up for me? Down. Good. So if you just want to do 12 per side without touching the ground. Oh, 
so beautiful. So, for three sets of eight, how much weight do you think? Start with seven and a halfs, tens. Uh, let's go twelve and a halfs. Twelve and a half, two. Two, two, two. Oh. Yeah, I've been, I've been going down a really deep rabbit hole with this, um, like all the content and, yeah strategies and trying to put piece everything together should move over here yeah trying to put everything together yeah so uh, Paul tomorrow then I'm going to start putting so I'll, I'm just going to start oh, I want to do a introductory video as well for oh, yeah. for LinkedIn so just say hey my name's Tree I've been in the industry whatever it may be and then just have it on LinkedIn as well yeah so I want to use, you know, that backdrop that I was explaining to you last Talking time? Before, yeah. You need use that. Back, yeah. So it's very clean, very professional. And then just introduce myself, I guess, and just a bit of a spiel on what I do. Yeah. And have that on LinkedIn. And then I, I might even be able to do it in TikTok or something or other. Or, well, I don't know. If I'll find a way to repurpose it because... Oh, you'll be able to repurpose it. You can change the, um, especially if it's a static shot. Mm. All you need to do to repurpose it is change the aspect ratios of your, like I can edit that, that's fine. Yeah. And you can put that and then you put it on shorts. Mm, yeah. Um, for free, I don't know what TikTok's things are because they seem to be working, but. What's that? The length. Right. So on YouTube, mm -hmm. for a non, like I don't have, like a created sponsored account or whatever they call it. Mm. So I can only do up to 60 seconds. Oh, short. right. On YouTube? Yeah. Okay. But I think TikTok might be similar. Mm -hmm. Like they don't want long video. So you could cut it. If your intro video is short anyway, it's not gonna matter. Mm. But if it is longer, you can just edit. Right. That make down. It, make it short, yeah. I would just say make it short and then you use the same video for everything. Well, I, I've, it's probably gonna be a 30 second video. 30 oh, easy. 45 yeah. second video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as long as it's less than a minute, yeah. it'll be easy. I can put it through the AI. Thing as well, oh, and like now. have it captions added oh, to yeah, it. Oh, yeah, that'd stuff. be cool. Yeah, well, I've seen your video. Haven't some of your videos had captions on it? That's have you from done that? Instagram. Oh, Instagram I just does put it. Caption and then it just captions it. Ah, oh, okay. But it doesn't make it colorful and yeah, and it's like pop and yeah. Cool. I'm feeling a lot more confident now that I've sort of understood my niche and how I can really like narrow down. Yeah. Because it's a very it's a very common, I guess, situation where people who have been active in the past, life, work takes over and they can't it kind of gets put on the back back burner. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's true. Like, I mean, you look at any big content creator now, they, and it, times are completely different. Like kids these days want to be YouTubers. Mm -hmm. So it's a sought after thing. But any large content creator has been at it for a decade. Yeah. And so it's not really, it's the same as every profession. It's not about being a quick success overnight. It's the time in. Yeah. Time in, yeah. yeah. And you outlasted those that are around you because people that start at the same time as you or before, if they drop out off, where are the viewers going? Mm. They're, going, going to to, they're going to somewhere and they'll go to a more established channel mm. before they go to a new one. Yeah. So if you stick around long enough, you just collect yeah. more and more people. Well, I just see this in terms of not so much PTing, but 
I guess I see people who kind of started out at the same time as me in whatever they wanted to do. Yeah. And I guess didn't push through the challenging times, they just dropped off. Yeah. Whereas I'm, I'm not saying I'm better or anything, I just was fucking hard headed and yeah. I just went, fuck it, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna yeah. go. And yeah. Yeah. And it was like this, we were chatting as I was leaving last week about your conversion rate, but then the people that will stay with you long term, mm. that's also just a commitment of mm. time. Because yeah. the people that will stay want to stay, and you gain more of those people the longer you do it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, and then you get to a point where you have like a core group, yeah. and you've got your stable income. Yes, correct. From that. And I think it's just, I think it's what they call critical mass. Yeah. So it's all about just getting that critical mass, and I yep. kind of feel like. I was having a chat, this chat with Jade the other day. Yeah. And in early days in business, fuck man, I was, if a client wanted a meal plan at midnight, I'd be up doing that meal plan for them. You know what I mean? But you kind of have to do that sort of stuff to get it off the ground. Yeah. And I, I feel guilty saying this, but it's almost like I'm, I'm past that point of gathering that critical mass. I've got it now. So I have to start setting my lifestyle up for longevity with this. And that was the biggest roadblock for me is you have to be grinding 24 seven. You yeah. have to do this, but then yeah. switching from that mindset to I've created a business not to just create another job for myself. Yes. I've created a business so I can have a lifestyle. Yeah. But mentally there was a lot of resistance there for me. Yeah. Well, it matches what you were saying to me about when I had the bad day mm. is that it's creating sustainability for when I do the photo shoot and I keep training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's not just about hitting that deadline. Like we've both got goals of, okay, now we're gonna go into bulking yeah. and then do a shortcut and get stuff out of that and then create content around that. Like if I hate the process. You wouldn't be doing it. I'm not gonna stick around <laughs> and do it. it, right? Yeah. Like I'll go back to doing my random CrossFit workouts <laughs> four times a week and <laughs> staying relatively fit, but not, like seeing myself in this last week. It's has exciting, been, yeah? Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> and the fact that I'm so close, I'm like, light's at the end of the tunnel. It's less than three weeks away. Mm. And I've got really good results, but then I'm excited to like move to the next phase mm. as well. We should do a podcast on it with your journey with fitness, how you yeah, we had were going a to. bit of a break, yeah. got back into it, and just our relationship together, what yeah. we've done. Yeah, Yeah, I wanted to do that to go after the original one that we've done where I yeah. interviewed you. Mm -hmm. uh, I've still got to edit that, but that'll come out for me in June. Yeah. And then afterwards, yeah, do another one with us. And So our one could be setting a goal to kickstart the momentum again. Yeah. Whereas so it'll be like, if you've fallen off for a while, let's set a goal. You know, what, what's yeah. your goal? Is it to just be able to play with your kids for longer than 10 minutes because you're too out yeah. of shape or whatever it may be that and a goal worthwhile that yeah. will push you through the hard time yeah. yeah so that's how we'll spin it yeah i'm also keen to talk about because like i've been through this before mm -hmm. this whole cutting thing and i want to talk about the difference between then and now yeah yeah and cool. while this is hard yeah. i had a lot more slip ups the first time because yeah. it was harder but this time i've had like one yeah. maybe like two two or three over the time that since if we look at January, since yeah. January. But if I look at the first time I did it, I was slipping up like every week. So and I still hit a goal, but. So why do you think that, what's the difference? Is it your maturity? In, not maturity in terms of. I think it's experience. Right. It's experience yeah. going through it. So I expect the next time that we do this, it will be even better. Yeah. Because my, my habits will be more dialed in. Mm -hmm. So my food, because the struggle that I had last time was I was still eating chocolate because I really liked it. Yeah. But I was working like shit hours and just the whole life experience thing as well because I was at uni while I was doing it. But I took this time, my experience from that time, mm -hmm. and was like, what can I improve on from that time? Well, my diet's going to be a lot better if I have slip ups, like acknowledge it and mm. like tune it up really quickly. But it's just. Like it's never, you're never going to get, and it's that perfectionist in all of us, is we want to be perfect and we want to have this plan and this goal 
where we're exactly perfect. Mm -hmm. But you don't get perfection from doing it one time. No. You get perfection from doing it 500 times. And learning from your failures. Yeah. yeah. And this is, if I look at it, this is my second time, yeah. and it's nowhere near perfect, but it's much better than the first and time. The next I did time it. it'll be even better. Exactly. And it goes back to that point before when setting a goal, it's not really the achievement of that goal that is really the value, it's who you become yes. during that pursuit of the goal. Yeah. As cliche as that sounds, but exactly your point there, you got a new skill set. You know, the skill set was, oh, okay, so when this happens, um, I'm not going to eat chocolate all the time because that's my weakness. Whereas without that first time, you wouldn't have understood that. Yeah. Was there only three sets? Yes, only three of course, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's from that first time, my time management's gotten better. Mm -hmm. My, obviously my maturity's gotten better. And so it all compounds. As long as you don't slip too far back into old habits. Mm -hmm. So obviously my training dropped off again, which is why I started this again. But my professional habits didn't. Mm. So, because they were in place already, and I'd experienced the training side of it, it was much easier to fit everything back into place. Oh, another thing we could talk about is managing that imbalance. So, with anything, there's no real work. Life. Yeah, we've got this one. So, there's no real work-life balance or balance. There's always going to be an imbalance, but it's managing that imbalance. Yes, here. So, we're going to go. We're going high reps on this one today. Yeah. We're doing three sets of 20, but feet close together. Okay. All right, so we're going to hit the quads a bit more. The, the other thing is, it's all subjective. Mm -hmm. Like if someone doesn't want to train and they want to spend their time with their family and working mm -hmm. and chasing that career goal, then that's completely fine. Yeah, so it just comes down to the values, what you yeah. value. But then if, I guess from a, a business perspective and attracting the ideal client, I, I want to attract the people who are in this situation who value health and fitness, but because of life, work and whatnot, it's yeah. going to take a back burner. Yeah. And it's also, like I think, going to the courses that we want to create, is it's about, there is some objectivity to the subjective opinion, mm -hmm. and that is having a general level of health no matter which size you are or what you do. Sets? Two more. I can chuck 20 more kilos on. 20 ten, more? 10 aside. I oh, will just chuck. Just chuck 20 more aside? Yeah. Yeah. Be cool. yeah, it's having that base level. Like, I love using that example of just Asian cultures and how good they are with mobility and yeah. they eat well, they will get up and do movement. And it's just like a cultural thing. Mm. And it's so good to see. Because I was chatting to my parents recently and they're both like overweight and they're a bit older now. And they're, like my dad, especially his back is really struggling because he was a plumber, mm -hmm. like going through a trade and climbing under a lot of things and lifting heavy things, like just hasn't been good for his back. Mm. But he keeps putting it out when he goes into low activity periods because yeah. he's not constantly moving. Yeah. And I find the same thing, like if I sit constantly, my hips tighten up, my back gets tight. But if I'm always doing things every day, like that doesn't happen. Yeah, no, well, I, I have, I've got real bad, like sciatic. Yeah. When, but it always happens when I'm in this bloody thing. Yeah. Long periods or I don't move a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that our whole work life has shifted to computers, but we still need to move so much. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Beautiful. That's a hundy. Oh, that's a real good one. Managing imbalance. Yeah, I was thinking about the courses as well, like how to, because it's like I know how to conceptualize my own betterment mm -hmm. in how I do things. I was like, how do you, how do you teach someone time management based on their own life and make that an exercise that they can do? And I was thinking of a few ways where if you, before you get them to come on the course, it's like a food diary mm -hmm. where you get people to write down everything they're eating is mm -hmm. write down high level points of what they're doing through the day. Mm -hmm. So work nine to five, mm -hmm. travel from work back home, if they're in an office. So I have I do that, and yeah. what I do is I get them to keep a calendar diary. Yeah. So I just, I go, have you Google calendars, but don't do it as an organization tool, do it as a reflective tool. Yes. So then, and I get them to show me. Yeah. So I go, show me your day. Yeah. And then nine times out of 10, I'm so busy, I got no time. Show me your calendar. Yeah. There's like five hours of fucking doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you do have time. Yeah. yeah. But it might be like, they've got five hours, but it's all spread out. Mm. And you're like, what if you move this thing here? Yeah. And then that moves that two hour period to here, mm -hmm. so you've got four hours uninterrupted. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's a really good point and idea because time management is a skill that a lot of people don't have. Yeah. Mm. But it's the same as, it's the same, you can apply that to everything, right? Mm. Like food, food diaries, budgeting diary, like, mm -hmm. Reflectively, what did you spend all your money on this week? Mm. Or over the last, if you get paid per fortnight, what did you spend all your money on? I love news drawing the comparison between my fitness power and a budget. Yeah. That's how I do it. I just go, okay. And nine times out of 10, a lot of people are good with budgeting and money. Yeah. I always go, okay, do you have a budget? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Oh, because I want to know where everything's going, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what you're eating? Or no. Well, then how can well, we when get people anywhere? are like, yeah, I generally eat healthy, yeah. and then you find out, oh, I stopped at Red Rooster yeah. on the way home because I was, I was peckish, mm -hmm. and you're like... But right. then it just comes down to value. So people value money, so they'll put a lot of effort into yes. budgeting, whereas health has always been like, oh, whatever. Ten. Good, ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. I think also there's a lot more tools available. If you look at modern banking apps now, mm -hmm. they will automatically tell you where your money's going most of the time pretty accurately. Yeah whether it's for bills, entertainment, eating out. Mm -hmm. Whereas my fitness power is a really good example of a good dieting app. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of others out there, but they're not as good. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I think the industry just hasn't been around as long for that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. But then it's also, why hasn't it been around as long? Because there hasn't been an interest in it, you know? Yes. Okay, so we're going to do here, we're going to do clusters on here. Yeah. So six by four in the last um, set, we're going to go as many as we can. And where the progressive overload element comes into it is the last set, whatever we got this week, we'll try and get one extra the week after. Okay. With the similar weight. And, the, and any time we'll increase weight, if we get 12 on the last rep, we'll increase the weight. Okay. Uh. 
So what so are we starting? Do, do a warm up first. Okay. How many reps? How many reps? Sorry. Uh, for the clusters? Yeah. Uh, four. Oh, four. Four by six. Four, four, but then four. on the six set, we go as many as, many we as possible. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's the, that's my, that's what I go to when people are like, oh, you know, I tracked for two days and then I ate pretty good, but then I only half tracked the other day, but I ate really good. And I go, okay, so let me put it this way. If you save your money all week and then Saturday, Sunday, you just spent whatever the fuck you wanted, would you be able to save your money? Oh, no. Why not? Because I'll spend everything I save. So, if you're eating in a deficit Monday to Friday, yeah. and Saturday, Sunday, you do whatever you want, are you going to get the results that you want? Oh. I can, you can understand why I think it's harder though as well, is that it's so, money is very universal. Mm -hmm. In, if we rent the same place, it costs us the same money to rent it. There's no difference between you and me. If mm -hmm. it's the exact same place, same rent. Mm -hmm. If we both go to a grocery store and we buy the same stuff, it costs exactly the same money. There's no difference to you and me. Mm -hmm. But our diet and our calorie intake, even at a maintenance level, is different. Yeah. And I think conceptually, mm -hmm. that scares people off mm -hmm. because there's so much more unknown and they're afraid of diving into their own numbers, I think. But that's Because it's that's just what... a learning curve. But teaching that is important and I guess why nutritionists and dietitians and mm, personal trainers exist, like right? Mm -hmm. But then that's sort of like the same as you might have a hundred thousand dollar saving goal. I'll have two, but the principles of how you could get there yeah. will be the same. Yeah. Uh, so I'll probably go with this. What? What? Sixty. Let's go. Sixty-five. So that's our working set. I think this will be our working okay. set. Okay. All right. So sixty-five. So remember that tempo too. Oh, what was the tempo? One, two, three, negative. <laughs> 60 is our working set. Three. Four. Good. Right, let's go. One. Two. Three. Four. Beautiful. One, two, three, four, good. One, two, three, four, good. That's our fourth. That's our fourth. One, two. Three, four, good. Fifth. Last one. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, five. Good, good, good. Yeah, I'm glad I went back to 60. No, that's good. Oh. Right, I might call it there, bro, because yeah, I don't cool. want to go half in the... All right, we're going to do a weigh-in tomorrow, and I might do a talk about it, but I won't film it.